So this is a really, really important project, which is more recent than Gaelic Games. It's the Green Club project, and a lot of people will have a, an idea of what it's about, but perhaps not a, a massive amount of detail. Maura's going to be able to explain this really worthwhile. So Maura, it is over to you. Hello, Maura. Okay, thanks very much, Thomas. Um, I'm just trying to share my screen now. Hopefully that is coming up for everyone. No, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, sorry, there we go. Okay, so thanks very much, Thomas. Um, and hopefully you can all um, see my screen okay. Can't see it at the minute, Laura. Okay. But we can hear you, which is a good thing. Okay. One more second, I'll try to get it. Don't give me a wee bit of bother. Yesterday, I thought I had that um, sorted, so. So while I'm trying to get this sorted, um, we were, this, the Green Clubs project is um, a new project within Ulster, or within National GA, um, and it's incorporated into the, the umbrella of um, the Community and Health Department. Um, and Ger's presentation that she was to chat about um, is also kind of a new and an emerging area around um, the community and health department as well. So the Green Clubs program is really something that we began last year, um, or sorry, in 2020 it actually launched, and um, it's something that we're now currently in phase one of. So yeah, sorry, I'm just, there's a few approvals here for some reason that caught my screen. Okay, so for any that know, for any that don't know me, I'm Maura McLennan and I'm the Community Health Manager and I just want to say that you can share, see my screen now, okay? Yeah, all good, okay, so that's great. Okay, so the Green Clubs programme um, was launched, as I said, back in January 2020 and from the Department of Communities, Climate Action and Environment, they had launched a Development Goals Champions programme. So the GAA is seeing this as an opportunity to collaborate with their, I suppose, their sister organisations in the Camogie Association and LGFA and the local government sector around sustainability. And this is all incorporated into the wider um, aspect of the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals, of which there are 17, um, of which there are 17 different goals. So just check it there we go. Okay, so there's a lot going on there, and I suppose. This is a global issue and we're all very much aware of the need for um, to look at this. It's a, it's a crisis that has been around for our, for our planet, I suppose, for some time. And we're really, really at the, the, at the cusp here now um, currently of trying to work as a, as a planet, I suppose, as a species, to try and see how we can salvage some of the um, destructions that's been caused by the way just that we live our lives. And through this um, sustainable development goals and um, the UN the UN have um, developed, this project I suppose is really focusing on four of them. So you'll see there in terms of health and wellbeing, and we've spoke widely about that today, whether specifically on the topic of the Healthy Clubs program or just in the wider, more holistic way that we've been looking at the club um, today, around quality education. And we've had a, heard a lot about how the GA, through working with our members, our volunteers, through our development programs with um, our officers, and young leaders programs, for example, that this is something that we can really tap into in terms of raising awareness um, around how we can tackle some of these sustainability issues. Our life on land there is another huge one. And I mean, it's already, I think Fenton mentioned it in his audit around, you know, the high percentage of our clubs that actually have owned their own land and what that actually means for where we can make some of these improvements around sustainability. And then our partnerships for the goals. So Obviously, the GA, LGFA, and um, Camogie Association are partners in um, bringing this forward through the government department. But then, equally, and as similar to how we operate as within the Healthy Club model, we are not the experts in sustainability. But through our links and our standing within our community, which I think has been well um, established throughout the course of this morning, we have a um, great opportunity to work with the people who are experts in this. So, we work with an awful lot of expert partners around them assisting us in moving our GA clubs to, and our association in general, to a more sustainable um, position. So the Green Clubs project, um, this is our brand around it, and we focus on the five core areas of energy, water, waste, biodiversity, and transport. So those are thematic groups within the groups that are, are within the clubs that are involved in this programme. 
Um, and we have identified and have worked and created new partnerships with experts in, in those areas as well. And it is great to know, I mean, this is a global issue, as I've said before, but it is great to know that this programme is not a standalone or we're not working in silos, but it's actually contributing to something which is recognised on a global scale because that's where this um, really needs to have, have take impact. So the programme aims, very simple, it's around providing guidance and resources to clubs to support sustainable development. So that's not just looking at what this means for outside of the club, but also looking for what it means for internally within a club. Um, by things like reducing costs associated with energy, water, waste and transport management. And we all know that finance was one of the key things that come up there as a challenge also. Um, all clubs are trying to look at ways to um, manage our costs. And then to improve opportunities for increasing biodiversity in our club grounds. And that's probably the area that we have seen most actual activity happen um, in phase one, which I'll chat to you about in a wee second. And then simply to support access to relevant grants and funding and, and, and resources. So that's something that's work that's ongoing with in the GA nationally, and we're trying to pinpoint um, funding to continue the Green Clubs programme into the following phases. Um, and as well, we're just supporting clubs at a very local level of where they may pick up small amounts of grant and so on to do some of the things they've identified. So what we've done so far, phase one um, has ran from January 2020. Um, normally um, it would run for a two, each phase would run for a two-year term. Um, but with COVID and everything, just as our clubs were kind of being introduced into this new um, pilot phase, obviously COVID hit them in the early months. So things have been delayed slightly. So we've extended out to June this year for clubs to get on, um, to get some of the activities that they've identified up and running and completed. It is based on the healthy club model, and it's great that that is the case because um, the healthy club model has been academically researched and the evidence is there to show that how we approach this kind of work is um, successful. And, that, and that's something then that has been transferred into the Green Clubs project as well. So in total, we have 45 clubs across Ireland, um, officially in the Green Clubs programme. 10 of those are in Ulster, and I'll just mention those in a wee second. So each of those clubs have, ha have a green team in place. So that's similar to a subcommittee within your club. It's a green team, we've named them. Some of these people are very active members within the club anyway. Others have come in, as we've talked about before, have been asked in because they have a certain amount of expertise in this area within their community. And they have went and been, you know, a, someone from the club has approached them and asked them to get involved, which is great. Um, we have identified a number of expert partners and we've um, set up a strong partnerships with them. And we're probably at the stage where we're in the middle of doing scoping exercises. Clubs are doing that themselves around developing audits for the likes of their energy usage, their biodiversity, how they manage their waste, how they transport to and from matches, training and so on. And we've used expert partners to help us in that. So, for example, um, Action Renewables have helped us with some of our energy audits. And RSPB have been in touch with clubs around looking at the biodiversity within their club grounds and um, waste that the likes of um, Action Renewables, sorry, I should have said for that, water management and so on. So we've had really good progress there um, already. So in terms of the Ulster clubs, there's 10, as I mentioned, and we've subdivided these into two groups because there are slightly different opportunities and um, experiences going on with, across at Cross Ulster. So we've established a Northwest group, which is a cross uh, border group, which is really interesting. Um, as we know, all these issues around climate action and sustainability doesn't um, respect borders at all. Um, but the, we have a group then, three clubs um, from the north and then two in Donegal. So we're working, sorry, three in Donegal. So we're working very closely then with Derry City and Strabane District Council and then Donegal County Council, who already have a, a cross-border partnership around climate action um, there anyway. So there's a really good partnership there established and working away. And then our other five clubs, they're all um, listed there. We're working across a range of themes um, that have been identified as needs within those areas. I suppose it is worth mentioning the other clubs within um, the rest of Ireland, they are all working on the thematic groups that I mentioned before of energy, um, water, et cetera. Um, and they're working specifically on those. So within also, we probably have a slightly advantage, uh, advantageous position of being able to work across a number of things if that's something clubs wish to do. And there's just some examples of how we have um, identified possible priority areas where clubs might want to work in. So right across there, you'll see neighbours in nature. So that's about communicating the fact that 
green clubs is now something that's on the agenda within um, a local community. The likes of greening our clubhouse, so looking at energy management, water conservation, waste management, etc. Greening our walkways, so a lot of our clubs have walkways or some kind of space where people come in and use and interact with each other and spend time. So it's about really looking at how we can manage the litter that might be generated as part of that, looking at the water heritage of the area, the biodiversity of that area, and then all the things like communications around signage, possible benches and so on. And then we have the other one around greening our games. And this is something that's probably really worth us thinking about. And um, if we even think ourselves around how do we get on a daily basis or when we go to training, etc. You know, are we all traveling singly in cars? And I know COVID has had an impact on all of this. Um, but moving out of COVID, hopefully, these are things that we can begin to really um, take a bit of stock on in terms of our transport to and from matches, the waste that's even generated from matches, from training, even down to things like where do we source our gear and um, what is it made of in terms of its material? How is it transported to and from? Does it come all wrapped in single plastic bags and things like this? So there's huge areas for opportunities where we can make um, really, really good pr progress. So I mentioned the biodiversity because that's probably one of the areas where clubs have found most um, ability to move forward and do something pretty quickly within this last year and a half that they've been working on this. Um, and the All, All Ireland Pollinator Plant is a great um, resource for clubs, whether you're involved as officially as a green club at this stage or whether it's just something that you'd love to um, go in within your own club. The All, All Ireland Pollinator Plan have a resource there specifically for sports clubs and how you can use your just the footprint of your club ground to try and begin some small steps that are really really important so this photo here is from Bumprana who you heard from before at the end of their video they mentioned that they are in the pilot or they is one of the green clubs program and you'll see there the mini bee garden so that's um at a location I think it's up actually near the chapel grounds and um, in Bumprana but they have created, along with the wee link they had with the local primary school, around um, creating wee bee gardens. So they've got some wee bee gardens that they've put in around their GA club ground, but they've also then been generous enough to bring that out to other areas within their community. And it's about planting species then that would attract pollinators. And then we all know about the, the huge crisis that there is with our bee population and the pollination role that they perform and what that means for all life on this planet um, as well. This is Lab Yarg in County Antrim um, and again they're one of our green clubs and they again is very typical kind of picture of a club in terms of yes we have our pitches, we have our club grounds, we have our, our um, sorry clubhouse, we probably have a bit of park and so on but every club probably has an area within their grounds that it's kind of land that's not really designated for specific use or anything. Um, so there are, there are opportunities for doing some of this kind of work. And they got a grant from the Belfast Harbour Community Awards um, to plant some native species on a part of their ground that, have, that wasn't really used for any specific reason. And we probably all can think of where that is in our own grounds. This is um, Strand, another Stearson's in Tyrone, and I know Gearns in the call. So, um, and again, Strabane were also involved with the Dermot Early Youth Leadership Initiative, which is around young volunteers. Um, so they used that group and that, uh, or that kind of programme that they were involved in and corresponded then with their involvement in the Green Clubs programme. And this is them planting a lot of uh, native trees at their club grounds, again, in another area that, that doesn't have any other use. Um, so it will go from a strip of grass that is probably mowed and kept quite well um, but it's very, very pure for biodiversity into an area now that's going to have loads of natural native trees um, that actually help with obviously biodiversity and so on, but will also help them with water management on that side as well, because they have had issues with flooding and so on. So that'll all contribute um, to other areas of their club as well. I put this photo in because this is from Mullingar Shamrocks, who've really been leading the way in this for quite a while, even before the Green Clubs programme launched. And they have a walkway <clears throat> around their club. They're part of the Healthy Club programme also, um, and it backs onto a river. So they realised that actually when they'd done their biodiversity audit of the club, they actually had loads of native species and animals and so on that were coming in um, and being part of their club they weren't even aware of. So they thought, well, we'll try and embrace this. So they've set up like we notice boards and stuff around that walkway to say, to, to really let people identify this is where you may find certain species that are native to this area and that 
probably people never had taken notice of before. So this is just some wall art then that they decided to do around their club just to showcase that like, this is something that we have done work on. We're involved in the Green Clubs programme and it just brightens up the whole club area instead of being a grey wall. Clubs are doing an awful lot around waste management as well. And certainly this is something that I think all our clubs um, need to look at urgently. And um, we are all aware and guilty of taking water bottles to training, to matches and so on. And we all have probably cupboards in our house full of Tupperware and reusable plastics that we could be using. So this is an example of one club who just took a drive on to try and reduce the amount of um, plastic by encouraging people to put them into the correct bins and so on. And hopefully that would have them thinking about just what it is they're using. And this is another example of Dunlavin MGA who went one step further and actually banned single use plastic water bottles at their grounds. So you either came with your reusable water bottle or you didn't have water there. And again, through COVID and everything like that, we've all had to be more responsible in taking our own water bottles, not relying on the, the manager or the coach or something to bring us out a water bottle. So again, it's just about taking two minutes before you leave the house for training to say, I must refill my refillable water bottle rather than stopping in the shop and buying a new one. And this um, picture has been taken in Girvahi. The Ulster clubs in the Green Clubs program had an opportunity last October to meet face to face. That was the only opportunity, or the first opportunity we had to do so, um, where we had just a great um, event bringing in some of our ex partners down clubs to get to know what other clubs were doing, the challenges that they faced, and it feeding that all back to us in terms of the support then that we could hopefully develop for them. Um, and then we got a tour of Girvahi, which was a, a great tour, and Mark Conley's name has been mentioned a few times, but Mark, as uh, Fergal had said, he's very much involved in the Girvahi project. So Mark was able to take all the participants around and show them a tour of the facility and a lot of the sustainability um, actions that have been introduced into the facility. Some of it was planned, you know, at the beginning of the programme and was able to be incorporated from, from day one. And then there's, of course, it's a learning um, process as well. So there's additional things that they have done up there to help how they collect water, how they heat their water, the legs of their windmill, some of the native planting that goes on and that management of the waste, or not waste ground, but the natural ground that is part of that facility as well. So it was a really, really interesting tour. And then I suppose it's important to point out too that this isn't something that the GA is just saying is the responsibility of clubs. Crow Park itself has been involved in the stadium sustainability program since 2008 and you'll see some of the key milestones there that they have reached. Um, and not to dwell on that but I mean 100% of the stadium's waste is recycled, reused or recovered so as solid fuel. So there is zero waste generated by the stadium which goes to landfill which I just think is an absolutely mind-blowing fact. Um, how they do that. And this is um, the program has led to a reduction of almost 75% in the stadium's carbon emissions from that, which is huge. And I suppose, like a lot of what we've been saying today, in terms of the GEA being, you know, at the forefront of a lot of this kind of work that we're doing across the board, that Crow Park is the first stadium in the world to be certified at the newest international environmental standard as well. So it's something that we can all be proud of and it's something that we can take confidence from knowing that this isn't just something we're asking clubs to do and um, that it's up right to the very, very top that this has been looked at. So the future then will be continued engagement with phase one green clubs um, that I've mentioned. On the learnings of that, and this is all academically researched um, actions, th there will be a toolkit developed, which with all the learnings there um, included. And then phase two will open later in uh, 2022. And the idea of the toolkit, I suppose, is like everything in the GEA, yes, you might be formally in a, you know, a club made club or a healthy club or in a green club. But even if you're not within those realms and it's something you're working towards, um, there's still loads of things that you can be putting in place um, maybe before you just get the certificate to say you've reached that standard. And we know loads of clubs are doing, are starting to think like this. They might not be in the green clubs program, as I mentioned, um, but there's loads of wee things that you can do to have an influence. And it's, by clubs doing this, we are then going on and impacting people's own individual behaviours and so on. And that's where I suppose we're going to make most gains in terms of the sustainability. Um, there will be a continued engagement with expert partners um, and funders. And we will definitely be, um, at, we currently are exploring more opportunities and partnerships to be made. Because this is a learning curve, not just for the clubs involved, but also for the GA as a whole. Because um, this is an area we have never done any work in before um, at a club or county or provincial level. So 
there's loads of new relationships being forged. And to be fair, the response we've had from um, those partners external to the GA has been hugely positive and they're really, really keen to see where this project can go. And the learnings of this will go beyond GA. It'll certainly go to other clubs and community groups as well. There's a number of resources there. Um, and again, hopefully these slides will be available afterwards. So they're just sweet snippets of where, if you're interested in this kind of thing, you might get a bit more information. Um, they're well, well worth you taking a wee bit of time to look those up. So that's my email address. If there's any clubs who would like to have any more information or whatever, or ask you questions um, following this, you can certainly send me a wee email.